and welcome to my Sweet Picking String Shifts program here. What we're talking about is really two ways of going from string to string. When we're using alternate picking, we are always using a different stroke than the one we just used. So if I'm uh, going from my B string to my E string, where I just left the B string with a down stroke, then I'll use an upstroke on the next string. That's alternate picking, right? And that way of uh, performing the string shift has its own challenges of accuracy and not having the strings ring out, and I guess you know all those already. But when we're talking sweep picking, the challenge is completely different because here we are really dealing with something that is incredibly easy because anyone can do this, right? Anyone can do six consecutive downstrokes or consecutive upstrokes with no problem. And that's the, that's the problem as well, because it's, it's too easy. It's so easy that timing becomes our issue here. Because anyone can do it, but anyone can't do it with timing. And we really, really need timing. Um, and that's also what trips us up, because it looks like we are, when we start practicing sweep picking, it looks like we're almost there all the time, right? Because we got that, it's pretty, you know, and we can sometimes we can fake it just a little bit by, you know, adjusting the tempo of our right hand so it fits almost our left hand without really having the timing down. Um, and so it looks like we're almost there, and that trips us up, because we're not. <laughs> and what, what, when you discover... When you try to do these sweep picking string shifts as part of picking a run, like where I'm not I, right there, I wasn't going from string to string using alternate picking. I was just using two consecutive upstrokes, and when that gives you trouble, it's often because you haven't got your sweep picking skills down. Of course, because we there's really nothing called economy picking. I know there's something called it, but what is it? Because you know, if you play three notes on one string and you go from string to string with upstrokes or downstrokes, you know, more of them than one, then we call it economy picking. But it's really just sweet picking. You know, it's the sweet picking string shifts, right? Because if you go from, if you have three notes on one string, and then one note on the next, and then you have three notes on the next string, then what are you really doing here? Okay, that was alternate picking. Oh, that was a sweet picking string shift. Oh, one more. Oh, we got alternate picking. Here. But is that then sweet picking or economy picking? Economy picking doesn't exist. It's just sweeping from string to string while you're doing runs, right? But when is it a, a sweet picking run and when it's, is, is it a, an alternate pick? It just, just doesn't make sense. So let's focus on the string shifts here, right? What I have in this program, uh, I'm going to show you what I played exactly in the beginning of this video, and then I'm going to show you some exercises that you can do to really get the timing down of sweep picking so you can perform it whenever you want. So you get that fluent playing style of being able to go from alternate picking uh, string shift to sweep picking string shift to something that looks like a three note per string run that then develops into something sweepy. <laughs> right? So you don't have to distinguish between what am I doing now? It's just a natural way of performing the notes in whatever way you want them to. Uh, sound or whatever technique you want to use for the purpose, right? So let's get started. I'm going to show you how to hold your hand, how to hold the pick, and then let's go into the good stuff, the, the runs, and um, the exercises of how to build absolute accuracy and, and timing in your right hand and your left hand when you do these sweet picking string shifts. So let's dive into it. So you put that little bone there uh, right where the low E string meets the bridge and that gives you a perfect position for picking all the strings. Then what you do is that uh, you, t you hold your pick so that you have it follows the, uh, the direction of your first finger and that your uh, thumb here it's actually at a 90 degree angle to it, so it sticks out of the side of the thumb with a 90 degree angle. It doesn't have to be precisely like this, but this is what works for me and many others who are quite eloquent at picking. Um, some people hold it more like this. They kind of put their first finger in like that, uh, so they, they, they pick more with their fist, right? I don't, I don't really like that feeling, and I have a sense that it limits you in, in a little way. So if your fingers can be relaxed down here while your thumb and index finger really does all the work, then that, that really, that's really what seems to be the best approach uh, if you have a chance to, to uh, you know, start off doing the, the most effective thing. Um, but then 
you place your 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 uh, little bone there, and then when you pick, you adjust the the angle of the pick a little bit. So it's not you know now I'm putting my pick down on the string like that. You want to angle it just a little bit, not so it comes in you know at a 45 degree angle when you pick the string, but it has just a little bit of of angle there. Hard to say how much, but a little, you know, from here, which is completely parallel to the string, to there. And then as you go up here, you your thumb really by you know doing this, it keeps the angle to each string while the hand stays in the same position, locked in there, where the low E string meets the bridge, right? So so it does this. As I go down, I can keep the pick almost parallel to the strings by you know, withdrawing or, <laughs> you know, doing this with my thumb as we go up the strings here to the lower strings. Then what you also want to do, you want to exaggerate that movement just a little bit so you have more of an angle on the lower strings, especially the two lower here, because they are fatter and rounder than, than the strings up here. So you want to compensate for that by giving them a little bit of a, a more steep angle. So while the angle might be slightly almost parallel to the strings down here, you want them to be more angled when you get down here. So it looks like this when you're picking your way down the strings. So quite an angle there. And then the thumb kind of, you know, pushes out like that. And gets almost parallel to the strings down here. And now I'm using alternate picking. But... Right? So that's really the mechanics of picking. And then what to say about the hand is that you have to stay in as close contact with the strings as possible. Mm -hmm. So you don't want it floating out here like in some, you know, you want to really be close to the strings so you can feel them almost all of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so you're, you're really as close as possible while the strings are still ringing out. And what I can recommend is that you practice almost all of the time with muted strings just to, to make sure that you have total control. You can always open up the You can always open up the, the the whole thing by moving your hand back a little bit, but just to make sure that you know exactly where you are. You can You can you can really um do a lot with that because that makes you it gives you a sound signal every time you're not holding your hand correctly or in the right place so you can really hear that now you're losing control because you have positioned it in a weird way so the ability to always be able to mute or not mute without doing anything but moving your hand just a little bit So now, unmute it, and mute it, without moving your hand much, and you know, just a millimeter. So that's really the mechanics, and then when you do your sweep picking, um, what we do here is that, in the beginning, to, to really get the timing right, you, sim you rest on the next string. So you do, a f instead of going from string to string and then just hoping that you can hit the right tempo, right? We don't want to go into that because that's what trips most people up is that we, we think we have to develop the ability to go from this string to that string within, you know, a second. And then we try to couple that with, with the speed at which we finger the notes down here, right? But what you need to develop is the exact, uh, is the ability to really to control these at any level you want, instead of you know trying to have the right kind of sweep, you want to have the right kind of sweep, the, the timing-wise, from string to string on just two strings instead of. So what you do is you take only two strings, and then you do a simple sweep of going down twice. And take the two middle strings, for instance. You anchor your hand right there of going down twice. You know from the from the D string to the G string, and, and you mute the strings as well. So no notes at this point. So you go down twice, and then you go up twice, right? This is a super boring exercise that is very, very effective, and it's also the hardest sweep picking exercise out there, because it doesn't let you get away with mistakes. And you could be able to do, you know, very effectively, and not be able to do this at all. 
But that's be- that's because your brain has, you know, it has learned this timing thing. Oh, no. Here we go up to that note again. <laughs> you know, from this to this. And it's kind of a timing it has. Uh, but we want to really get accurate here as far as our string sweep picking string shifts go. So what you want to do is mute the strings and then sit down in front of the TV and then do only this. And in the beginning, you want to do it with, you know, you can use a metronome if you want to. And then do it at the tempo that you're able at. Don't do it faster. If you start losing timing or control, then just uh, drop it and, and, you know, do it slower. And if you haven't got that inner metronome built within you yet, then please use one just for 10 minutes each day and then, you know, sit in front of the TV, slouch back with muted strings, watch sitcoms, and then just do this. And then when you get back to, back to your... <laughs> then then you, you'll have an added sense of control suddenly, right? Another thing is, don't hold your pick like this when you go down and like this when you go up. That is really counterproductive because you want to have the same technique, right? For whatever you do. So you can go from alternate picking to to uh, sweep picking string shifts uh, instead, if you want to, without having to you know, do all kinds of stuff with this to you know compensate for the fact that you know you, that we try to learn it faster than we really could. <laughs> Which I also have this kind of habit of going like this, and it re- it really is counterproductive. It just means I still have work to do. So, so you you hold the pick in the same way as we discussed before with that little angle there and then you hold it firmly don't don't you know don't hold it loosely to make the sweeps easier because it, it's just you know cheating your brain out of the experience of actually having control so hold it tightly so it can't move so you sure there's no delay from from your your movement and when you you hit the string right you want that ratio sharp Raise your sharp picking, right? So you hold it in the same way and you hold it firmly. And if there's any part of this that is hard, then just slow down. It just means slow down. But it's easy. I, you know, I can do this. I can, I can also do this. It's easy. No, it's not easy. It's the, the t- yeah, This is easy, but you know, the timing is really what we're after here. Um, and this is the only way to achieve that. So make this your primary sweep picking exercise from now on. Right? And then we're going to look at some different exercises, more, uh, let's say, a little bit more exciting exercises uh, in, in the next issue of this little uh, program here. And then now let's look at some sweep picking licks. Let's, let's wa- walk you through what I played in the beginning of the video. <laughs> of A minor, and I'm using the A harmonic minor scale, uh, which is just the, 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 the minor scale with the raised seventh there. So the first shape we're in, we're in a six note shape here. Are we, I use two six note shapes. At least that's how I look at it uh, when I look down on the fretboard. I have the tenth, the twelfth, and the thirteenth fret on both the B and E string. So I have this little shape, 10, 12, 13 on the B string and then 10, 12, and 13 on the E string as well. Right behind that, I have another 6-note shape from the A harmonic minor scale. I have the 9th, the 10th, and the 12th fret on the B string. And then I have the 8th, the 10th, and the 12th fret on the high E string. So 9, 10, 12 on the B string, and 8, 10, 12 on the high E string. You might want to just, you know, visualize those two patterns if you haven't already got them down. What I do is I start on the B string in the... Now I'm going to blend these two shapes together or do position shifts between them because I start in the 9th, the 10th, and the 12th fret. I play those notes, start with a down stroke, and then I just do down and up strokes all the way. So 9, 10, 12. Down in the 9th, up in the 10th, and then down in the 12th. What I do from there is I stay on the same string. And then I go for a fourth note in the 13th fret up here. 
I move my fingers from the 9th, 10th, and 12th to the 10th, 12th, 10th, 12th, and 13th up here, using my 1st, 3rd, and 4th finger for these notes. Before I was using my 1st, 2nd, and 4th finger. So I go up here. So I go down, up, down, and then slide up to the 13th fret and play down again. 13 with an upstroke, 12th with a downstroke, and then 10th with an upstroke again. And I can do that over and over again. Let me play that slowly. And then I can loop that. And you can use that little anywhere. But it fits really nice here because you have only a semitone there. One fret and then two frets, a whole tone there, and then a semitone again. It's a little bit more difficult when you start using when you start sliding up two frets instead of one. But it's suddenly it's 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 possible by all means. So so do it if you like this. So that's the first little line there. When I get tired of that, let's just say we play it twice, right? Like in the tabs. Then I really play this six note shape just from the bottom to the top. So once I'm that was once, right? And then twice. Now when I move down to the ninth fret again on the B string, I start playing these six notes that we talked about before. So I play nine, ten, and twelve on the B string, and eight, ten, and twelve on the high E string, using down, up, down stroke, and then down, up, down, again on the new string. So I have down, 9, up, 10, and down, 12. E string, down, 8, up, 10, and down, 12. So I use the same picking pattern on both strings. And that gives me that sweet picking string shift. So when you do this lick and you're kind of rusty in your uh, sweet picking skills, perhaps, then you really focus on that, da, 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 getting the timing right there. Right? Once I play these six notes, I go up one position up to the second shape we talked about. So I play six notes, down, up, down, down, up, down. Then I move up to the 13th, 12th, and 10th on bo both strings, and I start with an upstroke on the highest string, the E string, up, down, up, 13, 12, and 10, and then the same up, down, up on the B string, same frets, up, down, up. And that's really just a larger pattern from before, because before I was just going back and forth on one string, right? I went da 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 da. Now I, I can do six notes. That's the one six note shape. Then move up and, and play another six note shape down. And then I can go right back to that note again and do it again. So now I'm. Now I can do the same thing, and I can alternate between these two patterns of right. So let me just play that slowly for you twice on one string, and then twice on in the six note shapes here. So. I'm going to show you the right hand slowly uh, in at the end of this video, so don't worry too much about it. So start with a downstroke in the ninth fret. And then the sixth note shape, once I return to the first note again. Right? So that's a, that's a little circular lick there where we can go from one to the other. Very useful. Um, so what I do now is I, I want to go vertically down. 
And I have one little shape for that. Uh, I used the first shape we talked about, that little six note shape here, the 10th, 12th, and 13th on both the B string and the E string. To that, I add that raised seventh just behind the first finger on the B string. So I have... So I actually have the whole scale now. I have seven notes. And I'm going to play uh, this run. Uh, and you do the following. Let's just do the run. Forget about the first things for a second. You start up here. Play the three notes on the high E string, 13, 12, and 10th. Starting with an up stroke. Up, down, up. Then you do the same thing on the B string. Same strokes. Up, down, up. So you pass over with that sweet picking string shift. You play 13, 12, and 10. Right? Up, down, up. Like you did on the E string. 13, 12, 10. And then 13, 12, 10 on the B string. Same pick strokes. Now I go down to the 9th fret. Play that with a downstroke, then hit the 12th fret with my 4th finger with an upstroke, and then the 10th fret with my 2nd finger with a, with a um, downstroke, and then an upstroke again in the 9th fret. It sounds like this, from this note. So I play the 6 notes up here, then I move down to the 9th and play. Right, that little detail there. So, slowly. And if it isn't slow enough for you, then just, you know, pause the video. Right? I repeat that on the middle two strings within the same shape. So I have that same shape, that six note shape here. So if I go to the D and the G string, on the G string I would have the notes in the 10th, the 9th, and the 7th fret on the two middle strings. Same frets on the two middle strings because I'm just replicating this shape up here, right? So 10, 9, and 7 on both strings, the G and the D string. And then I have that added note there in the 6th fret now on the D string. So I have my... And that was also, and then six. That was also the first part of, the, of our sequence here. So I go down these six notes, starting with an up stroke. Ten, nine, seven, and then ten, nine, seven. And then down to the sixth fret, hit the ninth fret with an up stroke, then the seventh with a down stroke, and then up stroke in the sixth fret again. So we get up, down, up. Down, up, and then just keep the alternate picking going on that string. Up, down, up, up, down. Same as up here. And we do the same thing on the two lower strings here. We have the same shape again, but this time it's on the, the E and A string. And it's in the 5th, 7th, and 8th fret on both uh, the two lower strings here. And then you have the 4th the fret for that extra note on the low E string. Then you go up, 8, 7, 5, and then up, 8, 7, 5, down to 4th, 7, 5, and 4th, and then you can just end on the A, the root note of A harmonic minor. So, and the whole run there,
and together with the first, we have this little loop. We have the loop on one string, right? And then we have the loop on two strings. And we can go back and forth between those. And then once you do the sixth, you know, the two string loop, you can start the run as you move up to that position there. Right? So you go. And there. Right there. You can start your run again. So the whole thing semi slowly, and then you can follow along in the tabs. Or orient yourself in the tabs. <laughs> 